good evening, everyone. I call to order the October 17th meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board being recorded by ECMI. We have a heavy agenda tonight. We're starting a little bit earlier than usual. Uh, we are down a member this evening. I do expect him to come shortly, but uh, we'll get started with the agenda. First up, uh, we have a public hearing regarding two warrant articles for a special town meeting, which begins later this week. Uh, so I'm going to open that uh, public hearing. First up, we have Article 10. Uh, regulation of rock removal is a suggestion to amend the zoning bylaw by adding a section to it. Proponent uh, John Warden is here with us this evening, so I ask if Mr. Warden to step up. And, uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I know we've seen the, the, the substitute motion that we have uh, filed with the town meeting list today. Thank you. Thinks they know what 
going on says that it's not their idea, they'll just say no action. I hope you have more imagination. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, when I read this, I'm, I'm a little confused. I just want to ask for a little clarity here, okay? You're saying, and by this motion, you're saying that no rock or any ledge can be moved without special permit. Right, yes. But if you read the exception at the front end, right? Yes, but the, but the exception, who determines that? Who determines that? Well, they don't need, they don't need heavy equipment. No, no, let's say you, there's an exception in the back here. Uh, on here it says uh, uh, 50 cubic yards or less. No, 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 I'm sorry. There are two exceptions. Yes. One is an absolute exception for uh, uh, this is, you know, guy brought this up and said, suppose I'm building a porch and there's a boulder in the way. We've got to get it out of there. Do I have to get a special permit? That, of course, is not the intent. The, the idea, if you don't need heavy equipment to get it, right, you're the front end of the building, is, it says that stuff is accepted altogether. But let's, say, but let's say you do need heavy equipment to get something out of there that's less than two 50 cubic yards and less than an aggregate of one day's worth of work. Right. Okay? So, do you, according to this, do you still need a special permit? You go to the zoning board, they don't have to have a public hearing. Yeah, but who determines that then? It's, it's less than 50 cubic yards and... Well, I suppose, uh, I, I, I would, I don't know. Uh, I, I would suppose the, the, since the site, the site plan is required, they would file a site plan and say, okay, here is a, now I'm speculating here, here, here is the square feet that I would like to excavate. And uh, I think this rock is, you know, two feet deep. I've had some soundings done and it's two feet deep. And then you, you do the arithmetic and say, well, that's only 48 yards. Okay, good to go. But yeah, the, the, the John, zoning board would have to be. Yeah, but John, I think that's one scenario. But let's say, someone's doing an addition to their house and they're digging a foundation, they pulled the permit, they're digging a foundation and they found some ledge. Unforeseen. Are they going to find five dump trucks full? That's what I'm trying to get at right now, John, okay? Let's say the, um, they look at it and determine that it's less than days worth of work to jackhammer it out. They need to jackhammer it out. Okay, and they believe it's less than 50. But no, what was it? They still got to get a permit. They got the permit already. They got the permit to build the addition. No, no. I, they, they, they have to get a permit, as you said, at the outset for any amount of rock removal. If, they, if it's less than 50 yards, it's a lot of stuff. The, the zoning board does not have to call a public hearing. They don't have to give this fairly extensive notice. No, what I'm trying to get at, long story short now, okay, is Let's say I'm a homeowner, okay? I hire an architect to do an addition, for a drawing an addition, a kitchen addition, or maybe a, a family room because they're growing. He hires a general contractor, general contractor goes, takes the drawings, the architect prepared, brings it to the city, gets a permit. While they're excavating the foundation for this addition, they found some ledge there, all right? They, they determine, as best guessing, you know, doing calculations and so forth, that it's less than 50 and it's, and it's less than a day's worth of work, but they need to jackhammer it out with some heavy equipment. How I, how I read this is now the owner has to go hire a civil engineer and a lawyer to apply to the ZBA to get relief on this, and then the ZBA can go ahead and say, um, it meets this criteria of less than 50 yards and, and a day's worth of work. We don't have to have a public hearing, but there's a hearing anyways because they have to hear this and then it delays the whole project. What I'm asking is, uh, is would you be able to be entertained to say, okay, let's say something was found there and the building inspector then decides 
it's less than 50, you know, less than 50 yards, it's, it's less than a day's worth of work. You do, you do not need to go to the ZBA. I support the part that you have to go to the ZBA if it's a lot of excavation. Yes, that's, that makes a lot of sense. But I think you're just doing it a little too far, and I want to bring it back a little bit and say. All right, all right, let, let, let me just say this. The thing is, we had to, uh, you know, we, I didn't know if special town meeting was coming up. We had to put this together very quick. We had to, any changes we made, the modifications that we made, were, had to be within the scope of the article. I consulted with the moderator on that subject. Um, I'm not saying, and I will say this at town meeting, I'm not saying this is perfect. I think it can be tinkered with, it can be amended, it can amend it next spring. What I am saying is that if we wait until next spring, and I don't know if you, when you guys were ever going to uh, get into this, uh, if we wait until next spring, that bylaw, if passed, will not become effective until like a year from now. That means there's a whole summer that people may have to put up with this. Stuff. I want to counter a couple of things that you said. I apologize for speaking in terms of <clears throat> There are protections in the general bylaw for exactly what you're talking about. And I agree with you. I think that, that the intent of your article here is, is worthy and something worth pursuing. There are general bylaw provisions that will attack those. I don't know that whether what? those are being enforced, whether you're looking at open excavations, noise abatement. Uh, those are some of the things that it seems to me this article is, is geared toward tackling. And whether those are being properly enforced throughout town, I can't say. You know, it's up to the people who are affected by it to make those complaints and see. I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm not getting what you're, what you're I think this, there are already provisions. This is, I, I don't see this as a zoning issue. I see this as, a, as, a, as an issue of the general bylaw, where you have existing bylaws in place to go after rock removal, to go after things. The zoning bylaw. I, I think you're approaching it as, as a zoning bylaw. I'm amending, amending, amending a law that's been on the books for 40 years. The, the, the zoning board has had control over rock, sand, gravel, etc. removal since at least 1975, maybe before then. I can't help if it's never been invoked. I don't know if it's ever been invoked. Well, that's but they get away from it by saying, oh, we're not going to sell the rocks. <clears throat> we're going to give them away. OK, then blast away. There's no rules. Okay. Have you, did, have you spoken with the zoning enforcement officer about this? Are I have spoken with the zoning board. And what's taking place there? Hmm? And what's taking place? What's taking place as far as enforcement of the bylaws that are in place? Well, see, the guy says he's not selling the rocks. But the guy in Irving Street said he wasn't selling the rocks. So therefore, uh, they didn't have to give a permit. They, they didn't have to ask for a permit. <clears throat> Secondly, you're skipping around. Part of, part of your proposed article skips around the proper authority here. This is a zoning article. And it, you're right, it, it goes after rock removal, dirt, sand, etc. But it also involves site plan review. Site plan review is supposed to become for the redevelopment board as no it doesn't say site plan review it says they present site plan that's just which so you can see where would the, involve the site, site plan is. review which mm -hmm. would make the Arlington redevelopment board the proper authority and not necessarily the zoning well as I said the board of appeals thirdly I really want to take issue with the fact that the ARB hasn't taken any action on this uh, after town meeting last year, we established a residential zoning subcommittee that's met four times, that's working on it. People from your own citizens group are on that committee and are fairly outspoken and very good participants of that. And I give them all the credit in the world for that. This issue has come up. And we do intend to tackle it as part of the larger slate of zoning reforms that come into play at town meeting in the spring. You yourself said that this was hastily thrown together. I agree with the thrust of the article, so we're, I just don't agree with it now. I mean, but no action on it. But, but what's, well, okay. I, I don't disagree with your intent. Okay, but well, let's, again, let's, let's we're, stick with the intent. Easy. Let's stick with next summer and what people are going to have to put up with if they don't get some level of protection. That's what I'm looking at. You can, you can fix it if you think it, that your board would rather, rather handle it. I had to skip, stick within the scope of the article. I mean, I didn't ask for this assignment, really. I, mean, I, I, I would have thought, I mean, why didn't your zoning committee come up with this for, for the special meeting? To staff the committee.
committee. We had to meet, schedule times to meet. We've met four times already, but as you're well aware, the bureaucracy of town government, volunteers, sometimes takes time to get things in place. We have certain goals, we have certain uh, agenda items that we intend to tackle and get to ahead of town meeting in the spring. A special town meeting was, was, I think, a surprise for most of us in town. You yourself admitted that. I think we'll be ready by spring to have something that's a little bit better fit and we'll put the proper enforcement. Well, make the then, in place. then I'm only, only asking should be a temporary solution to spirit. To, to give people, the basic thing about this is to give people a voice so that someone comes into their neighborhood and starts banging rocks, they, they know in advance it's going to happen. Maybe they can send their kids to summer camp. Maybe they can take their vacation at that point. Maybe they can, you know, do something. Maybe the zoning board can, can um, uh, you know, put some requirements in there, wet, wet down some of this dust that comes out. Um, can you tell me, Jenny, what the proper enforcement channels are for some of these complaints that this would be brought up? So there's the, you had mentioned, the town bylaws that exist. Noise abatement is one of the bylaws that we've talked about. We talked about open excavations. Um, you talked about other, you know, sort of uh, nuisance issues that I think Mr. Warden is speaking to. Um, those are bylaws that could be strengthened, and to the point that you've already made, the residential study group is willing to explore the this point, issue. The there's actually, is, excuse me, sorry. there's actually a member of, uh, of in the audience tonight who's on my committee who may wish to speak about this. I don't know. It was brought up at the it was brought up at the last meeting. Can you uh, sorry, David, uh, Hill, the Hillcock Court, it's a public meeting court on the street. Uh, it did come up at the last meeting as one of the topics that we are going to discuss uh, further. Andy. Uh, I'm kind of hearing what you're saying about the purpose is noise and dust, noise and dust abatement or control, right? Uh, that, that is, that, that, that is uh, the, the main focus. And it's not just dust. You, you have to understand, when you're smashing up rocks, uh, and my wife will be speaking about this, and she's a scientist, you, you're releasing almost microscopic particles of rock. And if those get into the lungs of a young kid, he could be, he or she, could have a, a terrible disease for the rest of their life. So, and noise. Noise is, no, no, noise is big. Yes, so, I mean, big in more ways than one. So that's the thrust. And how does the current how are the current regulations? There are no current regulations. How Nothing is, was done. The only thing, the only thing, that, the only thing that anybody in this town administration did, the Board of Health went down there and they said, okay, you can only do this jackhammering and hole ramming between seven and four. And the developer said, oh, that's a shame. That's exactly the hours I've been working anyway. And then uh, they did, twice they went down and checked decibels. Once it was up to 91, you should probably know our limit is 85, which is too high. Uh, the decibel thing uh, was, you know, the decibel thing was passed because people were annoyed about the noise of leaf blowers. But a leaf blower, however obnoxious, goes on for maybe 15, 20 minutes max. This thing is going on for nine hours a day. And, and actually, they, they said, well, the average is below the legal level, so we're not going to do anything. And, and they also said, well, if this were as big as a SIM project, <coughs> project, we would be up here monitoring it. But this is a uh, any kind of notice. I, just, I think I'd like to hear what they have to say about <coughs> inspectional services and so forth. Inspectional services was not involved. They claimed that they had no jurisdiction over anything. Well, I, actually, I don't want to take your word for it, so I, I, Thank you. I, I, I respect your word for it, but it seems like there are other people involved in this, and we're just cherry-picking uh, one aspect of it, and I, I'd like to hear more from the, from the group, the residential group, and potentially from inspectional services and others that are involved in regulating or, or enforcing regulation on noise abatement and dust abatement and construction techniques practices. So uh, that's what I have to say. David, welcome to our new yeah. board. <laughs> okay. 
So along the same lines, I'd like to know, uh, have you fully, or, or those concerned, fully availed themselves of the bylaws that are already in place? They have tried. They have appealed to the building department, to the town manager, to the selectmen, to the board of health. Well, and no. I'd, like to, I'd like to hear that from the people who have asked. I want to know what they asked, you know, what bylaws they were asking Please. relief under, and what action, if any, was taken, and I if told none, you what why I not? told you what action was taken. That was in one instance, and I, I'd like, again, I'd like to hear the full course of events, not, not just a, a retelling of it. Uh, I'm also concerned because we're just at the beginning of, of the zoning recodification, and we've got this residential working group that came about from town meeting as a result of a large amount of confusion over the complex intertwined issues involved in, in changing the zoning, and I'm very cognizant about uh, trying to avoid tackling these very complex zoning issues piecemeal. Um, and I'm uh, inclined to want to let the zoning recodification process run but, its course. With respect, Mr. Watson, this is not a complex issue. This is a very simple issue. Do you, do you want every neighborhood from Mystic Pleasant Street on up west and north to be subject to this kind of thing with no voice, no hearing, no regulation, no nothing? That's just, you wait for zoning recodification, sure. And I believe me, I was involved in the last zoning recodification by the only one in this room who was. It's a long, tedious process. It doesn't take place in six months. It's a long process. I don't think people can wait, and I don't think they should have to wait that long. I mean, if, with respect, if the board wanted to hear from all these people, why didn't they call them in? Why didn't they like them? We are running a little bit behind schedule, so I ask everyone to please keep your comments brief. Uh, if you raise your hand, I'll call on you. Please stand up, state your name and address for the record, please. question is, is there a way that we could implement regulations such that it would be regulated and not require uh, a special permit? If some of the concerns are hours that, that you want operate, that you're permitting operation or the noise level, uh, it just seems that, that dealing with ledge isn't a subjective thing. So what is the purpose of, of making requiring a special permit? Perhaps we could require a notification anytime anyone has a project that they anticipate ledger removal. And then set some parameters that everyone has to deal with when they're dealing with ledger removal, as opposed to making it an application in a, in a process that might be onerous on the, the homeowner. Are you asking me that question? Well, I, I mean, I guess that's just my comment in general to this, this proposal. Thank you. We'll take that into consideration and I'll communicate well. The phone and I can communicate that to the, the working group that's going on. I think that is an instructive suggestion. Other comments, concerns, questions? Okay. Yes. I, I do have the C of Rebel Act 111 Sunnyside Avenue. I do have a hypothetical question. Um, one of the, the way the this is worded. It um, states that the ZBA may impose requirements so that people can have the continued quiet enjoyment of their home. So let's say that you know you have someone who you know they know they've got a big ledge to remove. They go through the permit process. People get notified, um, and in the process of removing it, well, it's just as much of a racket as went on you know, this past summer. And then you have so. At which point the ZDA might try, the town might you know, issue a stop work order, say. But the, what's to prevent the applicant from coming back and saying, well, you have a noise of law, 
We're following that to the letter. So please explain to us how this differs from quiet enjoyment of one's property. If you're going, in other words, I, I'm, I'm, my one concern about this is that, you know, we go, you go through a public hearing, you go through a notification process, and you like, likely wind up in the same, same place. So I, I mean, personally, I think our noise abatement law is not the most sophisticated one. It will protect you from permanent hearing damage, but I, I don't think it will do much more than that. Um, I, I, I think there is, I think that would be, a, in my own opinion, I think that would be a better way to tackle it. Thank you. Other comments, questions? Go to a vote. We're voting to endorse it or to take no action. Uh, most uh, specifically, as this board will recall from the memo issued to you some time ago, 
uh, the DPH issued in writing a perspective that the pediatrician's office was not precluded in the fiber control zone and then also put in writing uh, to one of our uh, interested town residents that it was precluded within the fiber control zone, which created a problem for us. Um, then, as another uh, concerned resident uh, pointed out, uh, in August of this year, in an undated, updated uh, guidance, the DPH changed its interpretation to say that only um, that absent a specific buffer zone by a municipality, you wouldn't necessarily have a buffer zone if you had engaged in any type of local site, such as zoning. So it's left Arlington and a number of other communities, including some communities that are uh, neighbors for us, in a difficult position of uh, potentially having no buffer zone whatsoever, even though it was our understanding of the <coughs> representations that we did, um, and having to evaluate an active proposal that's before the ARB and the, the applicants have been gracious enough to uh, voluntarily uh, extend their timeline or uh, uh, extend the time to consider it. Uh, we're sort of left in the position of not having a very clear set of criteria that we're supposed to be evaluating. Are we using the fire buffer zone that the state's established, uh, even though there might be some disagreement about what uh, would be allowed and not be allowed in that buffer zone, or is there no buffer zone whatsoever? Um, I think that's a very difficult position for the uh, ARB and uh, Board of Health to be in. Now, uh, the applicants, uh, I think, uh, have gone about trying to propose a proactive solution to this by uh, garnering enough signatures for a citizen petition to propose their own buffer zone, which provides clarity uh, in terms of what the ARB and the Board of Health are looking at when they're evaluating their application. Whether or not it's uh, the buffer zone, um, all town officials will ever see is a different matter, and I would expect they uh, present on their rationale for creating a buffer zone as they have. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions, but with, with that, uh, the only other thing that I want to comment on is that we do have to allow for r and d And if we have an over-aggressive uh, zoning requirement that essentially doesn't allow any place for these dispensaries to open, we'll be subject to liability in that way. Um, so it is a concern. Um, it's a concern of mine that there may not be a buffer zone because I think Town of Arlington wanted that buffer zone. And we presented it, and we relied upon that information in zoning um, r in the first place. But I also think it's important to keep in mind that you can't now turn around and establish a buffer zone that would effectively uh, not allow these types of uh, facilities anymore now. And if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them now or wait till uh, you know, more information comes up from the applicants or members. Thank you. That is the component that uh, introduce yourself and speak. Thank you, Mr. Burnett. Um, and, and the board. My name is Valerio Romano. Um, I'm an attorney for Massachusetts Patient Foundation and opponent. I'm here with Adam Fine, um, who is my law partner as well, um, and Joseph Lakash from the foundation. I wanted to first of all thank the board for being here and the members of the public for their interest in this issue. Uh, if you know if there's a lot of questions, feel free to call me Val. Uh, we've been working here for well over a year trying to get this site with lots of members of the town. I've, I feel like working in Arlington has been a real pleasure thus far. And it's a shame that the sort of the uncertainty that came out of the Department of Public Health process has, has put us in this sort of quandary. Um, we, we believe that where we planned on siting uh, worked zoning-wise, and we moved forward with that understanding after having worked with the town to obtain a letter of non-opposition from the Board of Selectmen. Uh, zoning enforcement officer communicated with them, thinking that Water Street address would work. So just full transparency, it's no secret, uh, we represent Massachusetts Patient Foundation. So they are the uh, nonprofit seeking to cite a medical use of marijuana dispensary in Arlington. Uh, this, this effort was to create the clarity that uh, had sort of evaporated after the Department of Public Health, um, sort of did it, you know, reanalyzed or put forth a different perspective on how they will enforce uh, the medical use of marijuana regulations. Um, so the Water Street location was really the only location that worked. We looked everywhere in Arlington. We knocked on doors. We walked everywhere. Uh, it was the only place that we could find that would be remotely available that would work. There was something else we found, but it was too close to a Kumon Center. So uh, that made that one impossible. And we looked and looked and looked.
about that. And we felt actually in the long run, <coughs> this is a fairly, it's a good use for that building. It's a medical building. This is a medical program. This is about helping sick people. Uh, it's tough to say no to that. It's, you know, we really believe that it was a good use for that building. Um, the existing zoning bylaw that contemplated that Water Street location passed in Arlington by over two-thirds vote. It was, it was 160 to 49, the vote that passed that bylaw that contemplated that location. So the voters of Arlington knew ahead of time that there could be a dispensary, a medical marijuana dispensary in that building, and they passed it overwhelmingly. And what we tried to do in, in crafting the zoning petition was to further that, but also give the protections to Arlington uh, that, that sort of disappeared after the, the, the change in the implementation of the regs from the Department of Public Health. The assumption, as Mr. Hein pointed out, was that you had a 500 foot setback. And that's what we tried to put through. Um, so this is not without precedent. Other towns have done similar things. And I apologize, it's a little cold. Um, at Brookline, they've done away with the confused definition of where children commonly congregate. Somerville has no setback at all, just their zones. Um, so there's, there's many different cities and towns that have amended zoning. Uh, in Kingston, 100 foot. Uh, recently in Cambridge, uh, rezoned to 250 feet uh, setback. So this is not without precedent. It's happened in, in communities that are close by, that are similarly situated, uh, and we're sort of following up on that. We're not making up something new and having Rollins and come out of left field to try something different. Um, we really tried to model it largely after Brooklyn. Uh, we hope that this bylaw creates something that Arlington could work with in the future to give some clarity as to where dispensaries could site in Arlington in the future. The fact is the point of this 500 foot setback is to not create a secondary market for medical marijuana. You don't want a dispensary. This, this is the idea behind it. Whether there's real credence to this, I don't know. I'm not here to, to advocate for question 12, which passed in 2013, uh, 2012. What I would like to say is that it's about not creating a secondary market. You don't want a dispensary across the street from a high school or a middle school where somebody might go buy cannabis and then go across the street, some unscrupulous person, and resell it to a high school kid. That's the point of this. It's not really some sort of you know, madness about you know, sick people with MS and cancer presenting a harm just because they're in the same vicinity of a child. That's not really what this is about. It's not what the setback is about. It's about not creating that secondary market. And we feel that the zoning bylaw we put forth hits that right on the head. Uh, we try to keep it 500 feet from schools, essentially. Um, so uh, the Water Street building, again, medical building, a great location. Now, one of the things about Arlington, 68% of people in Arlington voted in favor of medical marijuana, 68%. You know, it always takes just a couple people who show up to meetings like this in opposition, but you don't get the 68% of people. I mean, nothing passes with 68%, but medical marijuana did in Arlington. And uh, I think that's important to remember as we move forward, because if we effectively preclude this uh, by implementing a very restrictive zoning bylaw, overly restrictive, although we believe ours is fairly restrictive, actually, what we put forth, if we effectively preclude it, we are doing a disservice to the over two-thirds folks who voted in favor of the zoning amendment, or uh, the zoning bylaw, and a disservice to the 68% of people who voted for medical marijuana in Arlington. Anecdotally, while we were gathering signatures, we had more people than not tell us, well, we don't want any further restrictions on, on siting the dispensary in Arlington. And, and it's anecdotal, but we had people out there gathering signatures, meeting with the public, talking about the issues, and they said, what? You want us to restrict this further? And most people were actually quite opposed to the idea of making it so you couldn't site a dispensary in Arlington. So what's really at stake here is patient access, uh, not some sort of madness about you know, protect, protecting people from an unknown harm. Um, so I, you know, I've done this in many places throughout the Commonwealth, and I've had the least opposition in Arlington virtually at anywhere. Now, uh, Mr. Hine pointed out the fact that you can't effectively prohibit a uh, medical use of marijuana program, and that largely came out of the Wakefield decision from the Attorney General's office. Uh, a town can effectively preclude the use by creating, cannot, by creating a limiting bylaw that doesn't allow it anywhere. Um, Courts have found local regulation to be inconsistent with this and thus invalid under a state statute when the purpose of the statute cannot be achieved in the face of the local regulation. And I have, you know, some more language there, but I think we get the point. It's that you can't override state law via zoning. And 
the Attorney General's office has said expressly that that's the case. Um, so everything we've done is to be transparent with Arlington. I, I, I've been in front of the selectmen many times. I know Adam's been in front of this board before. I've met with town council to work out you know, how we should best. I've met with a uh, town manager. We've tried to do everything we can to be totally open and transparent and work really closely with the board to implement this important medical program. And so adding language that would effectively limit the siting of an RMD on Water Street, or essentially anywhere in Arlington, would ultimately hurt patients. For what it's worth, it would violate sort of the trust and working relationship that the foundation has had with the town of Arlington. It would probably be illegal, and it would violate the will of the voters of Arlington and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So I, want, I urge you to think about what are the true public health reasons for implementing a zoning bylaw that's so restrictive? And what really has been shown? What are the real public health reasons? So our request is this. First, either to endorse the petition, the zoning bylaw, as filed. That would be our first request. If that isn't done, uh, and any modifications that are contemplated make it restrictive, particularly so that that Water Street address no longer works, then our second request down the line would be to take no action. If both of those aren't acceptable to the board, we would ask that the board at least write in the opportunity for the Special Permit Granting Authority to have a waiver of the zoning petition for cases where you couldn't feasibly cite one otherwise. And that way we could at least apply, apply for that waiver as part of our special permit. So uh, with that, thank you. I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you had included in this package two drawings. I'm sorry, Mr. Lau? These two, two no, drawings? Those are from my department. Oh. <laughs> OK, then let me ask that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the one drawing right here, where it had the one circle, Right. Uh, that is showing a radius, right? That's the, yeah, the 500 foot buffer. The, the second one is actually the one to reference though. This is as, this is, we, sorry. I'm Jenny Rain, I'm the Director of yes. Planning and Community Development. This is a map that I requested our GIS um, director prepare. He had prepared a map at the time that we adopted the zoning. As you may recall, there had been a map done about potential facilities and locations, business districts, et cetera. So we took the, the proposed zoning and we mapped it. Is so that's what you're looking at here. Ms. Reed, is there an extra copy of that? You can take the copy. Okay. Okay. <coughs> so, Jen, this, yes. so you're saying the one, the two, I'm just going to go the two uh, radius, right? That's the one that has the two schools in it, and that's the radius based off those two schools? So um, the inclusion of those two schools is a subject that we should discuss. We, our understanding, the town's understanding, is that those two schools are within the purview under um, that Massachusetts Department of um, Early Education, second, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting the department, but like DESI, Early Education, Secondary Education. Elementary. Elementary, thank you. So we, we have an understanding that those two schools fall within that. But the way that the proposal is written, I suppose we might, that was actually a potential amendment, is to include public and private schools. So just to, just to have that clarity, as well as the um, general So that's what you're looking at. And the one, the one circle with the two stars in it, those stars are? The stars are the potential facilities that are um, the sort of, <coughs> what did I call it, sorry, thank you. The child care, potential places care. where children congregate. You have a daycare. Right, yeah, those are the two, no, the, um, there's a daycare across the street, and there's a, or it, we've understood that there might be a daycare across the street, and then that is the Montessori school um, that is located in the church facility. Mm -hmm. okay. That's the two stars within the circle. I'm sorry that everybody's not looking at the same map. <laughs> These were just prepared for the purposes of understanding what the buffer zone impact might be. If you have one. If you had a local buffer zone, what would it mean? What would it look like compared to the current lack of any buffer zone? Okay. 
I'm a little. Can you just skip over the light? So yeah, we'll, we'll come back. <laughs> and it's following up on that though, Kim. What? Or Jenny. So this 500 foot buffer on this one would, yes. would allow yeah, that's... would allow for the current Water Street location to be approved, or would be approvable, etc. It might be approvable. I'm I'm going to say might. You know, I. I'm, we're not at that. We're not approving the facility at this discussion, so I feel a little bit that that's not that the matter at hand is if you want to adopt a local buffer zone, not if you want to permit that facility in that location. And I just want to focus on the substance right that now. That hearing is to take place. That's the continued hearing on November seventh. That's not what's happening tonight. Sorry, Andy. I just so not trying to not answer your question, but that's just want to refocus. So the town has has been presented approved this location. Did I hear that in the, your presentation? Uh, uh, Mr. West, uh, I'm sorry, could you please repeat Did that? Did the town approve this Water Street location? Yes, this it, location was contemplated in the zoning bylaw as approved at town meeting in 2014. So this was absolutely contemplated in the two-thirds vote. This, this was an approved location. But if, whether the townsfolk talked this address specifically, I don't know, but certainly this was mean, part of the approved area. Meaning the central business district? Um, Yes, the, the, this, the yes. B, B5. So the, 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 the excess of two thirds of town members and the board of selectmen in the past have vetted this location and found it. They, they've approved of this use at that location. We have the letter from the board and we have the two thirds vote, well over two thirds at, at town meeting in 2014 for this location. Okay. It, it just seems, I remember a discussion about actually keeping it in an area of the downtown business district where the police could be, you know, um, keep an eye on it, um, as opposed to starting to try to find an area that's farther out in the industrial district, for instance. Obviously not a residential district. So if we're going to have one in this town, I may agree with what, what was said in the town meeting, that a central business district zone in a medical office building is potentially where we may end up. So I'm a little worried about a buffer zone that I don't really quite understand, but I'm more less worried about thinking about a, an actual zone of the town in the central business district. Well, the, the, the discussion tonight is about the buffer zone. Just we'll, about the buffer zone. Just about the buffer zone. We'll actually have a further discussion, continuation of the public hearing we had last month. On November 7th, November 7th, we'll actually discuss the merits of the location. This disregards the buffer zone tonight. Uh, we do have it does. tonight's discussion just oh, no. regards only the buffer zone. Tonight's vote is only as, as regards the buffer zone. We do have Doug Hammond and Christine Bardone here that can probably clarify some of the buffer zone questions if you want to ask them specific things about either of you want to ask them specific questions about that and how they came to that decision. So. Mr. Chairman, may I just shed a, yes. a little bit more light? Thank you. Yes. Uh, so currently the bylaw contemplates siting in B3 or B5. Right. So that, and that's the current contem contemplated area. So I think it's exactly, it's the nail on the head for what you're talking about, Mr. West, keeping it uh, in, in the downtown business district as opposed to putting it further out in the industrial part, you know, for police monitoring or for any other reason. But the current bylaw is B3 and B5. Sure. So redirecting based on the this is all about the buffer zone. What is making it unclear to us that the Board of Health is objecting to this? Why isn't that a clear decision tonight? If the town's already approved those two zones, because the Board of Health is saying you've got to have a buffer zone. If, if I may, uh, I don't think the Board of Health is saying that you have to have a buffer zone. The Board of Health has provided input on this one. When we made the uh, case to town meeting for wherever we wanted to zone this, we made it with the understanding that the state had established this 500 buffer zone. That if we didn't regulate it in any other way, it would exist. So here we've got it. We know that we can put it in a B3 or B5 district. And we're going to have some reasonable confidence that it's not going to be right up against Arlington High School or Arlington Catholic because the state says you can't have it within 500 feet of the school. It's the state that then said, well, 
uh, actually, if you zoned it, then you don't have a buffer zone at all. And so the concern is uh, that <coughs> we don't have any other local siting control at this time. I think what the Board of Health has spoken to is, you know, if we're going to have some local siting, these are some of the things that we're concerned about. Because right now, we don't have anything other than it's zoned in B3 or in B5. I think what you're saying is, well, by having this buffer zone, it's limiting and it's pushing things further away from mass applicants. Maybe that's not what you're saying. I don't know, but yeah, that would be my worry. So we were operating in a way that caused an illogical location to the thing. I mean, we were operating under the uh, well-founded belief that 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 was the status quo, that we're zoning in B3 and B5 with the five control bars. Now, we, our understanding is that DPH has backed off of that position, and without creating a new buffer zone, there's the risk that there is none, and so you could cite it anywhere within B3 or B5, for example. But even, so within B3 and B5, uh, it, that doesn't mean, uh, there, there are locations within B3 and B5 where if there were a buffer zone, it still wouldn't be possible to yes. put an expenser. Yes, sir. Exactly. Because of the buffer zone. And what I was, my, my, earlier, my earlier point was, is that we only have zone for two districts. And realistically speaking, uh, I have not done an absolute uh, uh, GIS analysis on this. But realistically speaking, a very restricted buffer zone, you could zone in any business district and you wouldn't be able to put it anywhere. So the alternatives at that point in time are, you know, is this something that we're, we're going to allow, we're going to have a conversation about whether this is residential, whether this is industrial, because those are the only zones in Arlington that aren't going to have some of these facilities of legitimate concern, uh, as uh, Mr. Romano spoke to, things like schools. Those are the only things that aren't going to have a school within uh, a certain radius. So if you expanded the buffer zone, you could have 1,000 feet. In Concord, I think it's 3,000 feet. That's because Concord is not very much like Arlington. Mr. Benalia, do you think I could interject one? Yes. Uh, thank you. So there's one other function here is that the board select and operate sort of we operate a, a, a gatekeeping function. So um, obviously we're supported of our petition. If, if, if it becomes more restrictive and impossible to site, particularly in our location, um, taking no action whether the Department of Public Health is saying there is a 500 foot or there isn't. The, depart, uh, the Board of Selectmen still has that gatekeeping function. So if I came in as a new applicant and I wanted to be across the street from Arlington Catholic, the Board of Health isn't going to give me a letter of support or non-opposition that would allow me to move forward in the application process. So they have complete discretion in that gatekeeping function. And we had to go and we had multiple meetings with them and we had to go through that sort of discretionary evaluation with them. And that is absolutely an application requirement that exists uh, as for, to submit a siting profile. So. While we're obviously proponents of, of our article, in the event that it became overly restrictive and we couldn't cite, taking no action wouldn't just allow it to go across the street from any of your schools, because the board is that gatekeeper, if that, if that helps to, to shed some light on that. Thank you. Yeah. So other, other communities have, have taken different approaches to this. You, you referred to a couple of them, but there are a number of others that have uh, created uh, different kinds of buffers, including a wider range of, of facilities that were not allowed to be within the buffer zone, uh, different uh, different distance buffer zones, as well as different ways of calculating the buffer zone distances. And it seems like uh, many of them are, are looking at straight linear distances, an actual circle, like we're looking at these diagrams. But that that isn't what what's been proposed uh, in, in, the, uh, in the proposed bylaw. And can you talk about that a little bit, uh, when I calculate the distances that way? Absolutely. So it has really to do with the, the density of, of our own I mean, if, if you know, um, children or medical use of marijuana patients don't travel as the crow flies. You know, I mean, if the issue is how far away is it, how long does it take to get somewhere, then direct pedestrian access makes sense. Quincy, for instance, has a 1,500-foot setback, but it's direct pedestrian access. So we were able to cite one, not this group, but one other one of our clients was able to cite one on Rashidi Drive. Um, and so 
it's, it has to do with the, the density of Arlington, why we couldn't just do it as a crow flies without significantly reducing that setback requirement from 500 to 200 feet, 250 feet or 100 feet, which we had contemplated, we thought to do it, but we figured we would meet with less opposition if we maintain the 500 foot, have a justification as to why we measured it the way we did, which is that direct pedestrian access due to the density. So that was the thought process behind doing it. Um, you, so, yes, I hope that answers it. Who's responsible for doing that calculation and reviewing that calculation as, as part of the approval process for site? So the zoning enforcement officer here in Arlington, um, uh, I believe his name is Mr. Byrne, uh, would uh, not select him, but the, the other Byrne uh, would, would certainly have, uh, would have to do with that decision making process uh, to make sure we, we comply with zoning. And then I think that your board, you know, a special permit would say, do we match, do we, do we qualify under the special permit for any uh, special permit criteria? And so your board would also weigh in. But my guess is that there would be some look to the zoning enforcement officer to help you make that determination. And we, of course, would hire uh, a civil engineer to do measurements and, you know, we'll get measurements on a civil engineer's letterhead with his signature saying that we are, you know, X, Y, Z feet away by that measurement. And also, why, um, if you look at the original DPH regulation, that it, it refers to, to schools without the qualification of being under DPSC supervision. Why are you including that? So it's really, it's largely, it's not exactly the same language. The Brookline language is actually a lot looser. We were trying to craft a tighter bylaw. Um, the DPH, they, they, what they say is anywhere children commonly congregate is what they say. And as Mr. Himes spoke about it, uh, you know, they, they include schools. They don't include ice cream shops. It's sort of all over the map. It's really a three-prong analysis. Is the people under 18, do they show up in numbers? And do they show up uh, on a regularly scheduled activities, right? So that's why an ice cream shop doesn't count. Um, that, that was the that was the, the, the DPA analysis in implementing the, the regulations for the medical use of marijuana program. I tried to, during my introductory remark, remarks, I tried to give some rationale as to what the real idea behind children commonly congregate is and the setback is to keep it away from you know an aftermarket for cannabis. And it's not about having people with MS and cancer being near, you know, just any child at all, period, you know, uh, no matter what age. And that's really sort of the rationale and the thought process behind this. Um, so, you know, that's why, you know, we, we looked at what other communities are doing, particularly Brookline that's close by, and we tried to, uh, you know, we tried to sort of model it after that. And that, you know, a, a, away from schools, but not in the same building, uh, so that, that was uh, as, a, as, a, as a daycare. So that was basically the way we tried to model it, but we tried to make it more precise. <coughs> Along those lines, why did you exclude libraries? I see Belmont has libraries included in their bylaws, some Lexington, uh, I do know that it's included in others. Uh, why was that excluded? Well, uh, you know, all along we've been sort of operating. We moved forward in this process for well over a year, working with Arlington and the, and the board of selectmen and our enforcement officer to the extent that we were able to communicate with them. Met with, you know, met with police, met with town manager, met with town council, and all along we were operating under the under the impression and the belief, the reliance that the, the library that is not too far away. I mean, you know, Five Water Street is just you know just around the corner from here. There's a library around the corner too. And we were operating in the impression that the town felt, also given the, you know, the, the fact that it passed at annual town meeting, the town felt that, that was an appropriate location. So when we crafted our, our supplemental bylaw to give some clarity to these issues that sort of came out, we wanted to keep that location working. And um, you know, we certainly weren't trying to craft a bylaw that would make it impossible for us to cite in Arlington and just wasted a year and a half of our lives. Uh, it, you know, and so that's, I mean, that, that, that's really the reasoning behind why, why we crafted it the way we did. Go ahead. Can I follow up on that? Uh, but, so, are you saying that you think the library does have regular schedules? Uh, no, we do not. That, that, that it fits, it, that it wouldn't, um, I'm trying to figure out whether this is a, uh, which way I'm going with this, but that it would be prohibited because of the buffer zone if we went with the state one? Yeah. Yes, please. So uh, one of the things that I want to make clear is that um, in, 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 in the, the state buffer zone is not an option. 
In other words, they're, they're not, that is not on the table. They're saying, the state is saying, you don't have one. So we can recreate the state. That's what I'm saying. Sure. We can recreate it uh, that was the intent of town meeting. In, in, in my interpretation, the library didn't meet that three prong test. I would agree with that. So, but that I was asking the, the, yeah. the proponent was whether that's why he was avoiding putting it there. So, I, 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 but I, when he was saying that there are representations and stuff like that made by the town, I just want to make it clear that when the zoning enforcement officer oh, yeah. you know, went through the inventory of yep. things that are in that area, that was my, if, if, if the board is interested in my read on that, I'm happy to provide it. There is not, um, unfortunately, what oftentimes happens is, is that there's no definitive set of rulings from the EPH until somebody calls them. Right. And then, as we've seen, sometimes they say, what do they have? Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll, I'll defer to. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Would like to have heard your. I'm sorry. Right now. <laughs> but, uh, um, so, uh, you know, I, I think from from my perspective, but having been here uh, when we first uh, uh, were part of this, I guess I'd feel a little bit uncomfortable going beyond what the, the state uh, buffer zone is because I know that was the intent of town meeting, and there certainly was a lot of uh, communication around that. Um, and uh, from now, having said, and I think the other thing that this does not pick up, I know that there is a daycare center at um, Arlington Boys and Girls Club, but you know, presuming that was a B three three five, you know, that fits everything else. I think it's I'm a little incredulous that that something like that would not be picked up by the body, uh, because I do think that that something like the Arlington Boys and Girls Club would be, in, you know, exactly what it is that the town uh, seeks to include in the so, you know, my own my own opinion is is that um, if 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 the if town council believes that we are now don't have a buffer zone because of the non inclusion of it, that the only thing that I think that the board should do, and I'm not sure we can under the um, uh, whether we're too limited in the scope here, but is to uh, reiterate that the state buffer zone. Can I ask a question about that specifically? Yeah. Yes. I didn't think town meeting said that. You don't? No. That was my recollection. My recollection was that, I'll just give you mine, and then because then, you were there too, so the both of us were there. there town meeting were, well, when you were on that, but we, we would have talked about it when, yeah. uh, when the board was there. But my recollection was that we specifically did not put in the buffer zone because we were told by town council that if we avoided putting the buffer zone into the zoning, that the buffer zone would exist per the state buffer zone definition. That, that's that's my recollection. That was my understanding. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so you think that it was approved in those two districts, B three and B five? Yes. With the state buffer with zone. Understanding applied. that the, but that's not what was approved in the town meeting. There's no mention of that. Well, right, because because the the opinion that was provided to town meeting and to the board was that if we didn't mention the buffer zone then it, the state buffer would apply. Now what we're hearing is something a little different. Yeah, I, I think what I understood was that if, if, Silence meant if there state. was a proposed R&D in a B3 or B5 zone, then the buffer zone would be applied to that to see if it was possible at that specific location. In the B3 and B5. Within B3 and yep. B5. Uh, but apparently that's well, not the case at the moment. Well, I think the state has kind of dealt a little bit about. I mean, my my question uh, my question is, have, have, I don't know if this might be planning department or or town council. Has anyone actually done an analysis that if we were to recreate the the, the state buffer zone that town meeting believe would be in effect? Uh, are there viable locations for an R&D in B3 and B5 in that, in that case? Because it sounds from the proponent uh, statement that, that there isn't. Uh, Why is it? I thought it sounded like it was. These guys are recommending a buffer zone. But it's, it's more tightly constrained than, than the one that uh, stays in the DPH regulations. Is it? Yes. Yeah, I didn't know that because it sounds like it's a 500 foot. Isn't it asking for 500 feet and then a thousand feet, right? Yeah. So the, the, the one the one issue is uh, 
daycares model after Brookline need to be in the same building as opposed to, like early education needs to be in the same building as opposed to anywhere within the 500 feet that counts. So that, we model that after Brookline. And that's sort of the way we felt that we saved uh, the, uh, the Water Street location. But following precedent of Brookline, which has a site of dispensary right now, um, you know, but that was, we didn't include early education, um, just elementary, secondary, and high schools in the 500 foot definition. When you look at, and I have some more, I have some more copies of the, of the, I have the proposed vote. So that, that, was, that was the way we modeled it after Brookline. That's what I was talking about the precedent there. Uh, I do want to give town council the opportunity to answer. Yeah. So the answer is it's probably in life. And, and the reason why was the time that the application was received, uh, and this application process is unusual in the sense that there's a parallel state application process that goes to the selectmen, it goes to the ARB, it goes to the Board of Health. It's a little bit uh, more complicated than the traditional sort of application before the uh, ARV, which is usually complicated enough. Um, at the time that their application was submitted, there wasn't any day, there weren't any daycares. There wasn't a daycare in the Unitarian Church at that time. Um, and it depended on how you interpreted facilities in which children commonly congregate. So in my interpretation, uh, the library was not a place where children commonly congregate. Uh, and I think I've never heard anything from the state or anybody else in this practice area that's been consistent with that, although I understand there might be some philosophical disagreement about it. Um, the pediatrician's office uh, wasn't initially an issue, uh, and that was confirmed with DPH, but then DPH reversed its position. It's my understanding that the applicants had in writing from DPH that the pediatrician's office was not a problem under where children commonly come to date, and then we had a town resident who got a completely different uh, position from DPH and writing. So this is the issue, this is how we arrived at the place where we are at today. So we had a 500 or so at the time they put in an application. Uh, as far as I was concerned, I didn't see any facilities in which children come to did it, schools um, or uh, daycares within 500 feet of buffer zone. As the application wound through, a couple things happened. One, a daycare opened. Two, and more importantly, because you can only hold applicants you know, to things that are open at the time they submit their application. Right. Otherwise, you, preclude, you can preclude any facility that people really, really want to have them. Uh, but, then, but then two, the, the DPH reversed course on not just something that was in and around the buffer zone, but was very specifically co-located in the same building, in this case, the pediatrician's office. So it's very hard for me to answer the question in a super direct fashion, because at one point in time, I think the state buffer zone was fine. But then, at this point in time, with the state's new interpretation of pediatrician's office, I think it poses a problem. It puts us in a lot of uncertainty, which is, again, uh, why the applicants are here. Um, there are a couple other things that also bear noting. There are some things that might be considered um, close calls. There's uh, something called a Linda Moon Bell Learning Center uh, close to the location of Water Street. It's not a school. Um, it's mostly a tutoring center. Where they don't have classes, but according to them, in theory, maybe they could someday. So, but but for a couple other reasons, they weren't uh, listed in either Desi's profiles or our building inspector uh, uh, zoning records as a place uh, that had uh, operating children's services. So that was a whole separate issue. But the long and short of it is, is that it doesn't seem all that likely that there are a lot of locations that would be available under the state's buffer zone if you took a conservative. Uh, reading of places where children come and come. Under the most current readings that are coming out. Exactly. Yes. And with, with the zoning bylaw as, as we yeah. modify it. With the two zones that we. That's the only thing in the zoning bylaw. If you apply the two zones are allowed. If you apply the state's buffer zone to B3 and B5, it would not be, it'd be highly unlikely to find a location if you took a conservative reading of places where children come and come. If you took a midline reading, which is what I think I tried to adopt in this long saga, if you will, um, you know, I felt like all three of those criteria weren't met um, by other things in that zone until the day Carol opened. And even then, there's some difficult you know, questions about how you handle a grant 
grandfather situation. Um, scope wise, given the Warren article, um, how much latitude do we have on this? Does anyone ask Tom Moderator? How much latitude do we have? I actually asked the moderator to speak. Mm -hmm. Let me ask Tom to speak. It's the moderator's decision, right? Uh, it is. Yes, just I'm just asking him if he should be a time. No, I, I, I understand how you work with people. So, Scott, I'd actually be interested in what okay. the gentleman has to say. It's the time I've talked about it, but, but it's been a changing landscape for a long time. Mr. Chairman, just a point of order. Are you going to allow the public to speak on this article? It's almost eight o'clock. Yes, I am. Thank you. And, uh, yes, sir. Mr. Scott, I'm Good board. My name is Jason Cofield. I uh, live at 94 Robbins Road in Arlington. I follow us for a long time. First off, I think anybody that gives you a definitive answer on this is probably not accurately answering your questions for you because one thing I've learned is that everybody's all over the board with this. The one thing I have asked, specifically your question, right. I, I believe the same way you do, that town meeting under a theory that they, they adopted this zoning bylaw and the belief that there's a buffer zone, why not just implement that buffer zone? I asked the moderator in an email, and I can, I can produce it. Yeah, no, 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 no. They said that, I asked, can we just reinstate the buffer zone as it was believed it was implied in 2014? He said that would be out of scope um, for two reasons. One, well, I asked that we have a definition of what you want to copy, whatever that is, just to provide some clarity. He said that wouldn't be in scope, but even, even that just, would not be in scope. That would not be in scope. So if we just even define that, correct? He said that that would. Not be in scope. The other problem with the scope is the way that this Warren article measures 500 feet different than the way DPH measures it, therefore it's out of scope, according to the town honor. Those are the two issues he had with it that he found it would be out of scope. So, in my opinion, the thing, and, and again, it is the town monitor's decision. Right. Uh, you know, I consult on these things a lot. In my opinion, things like the footage could be made so that it's less restrictive, but it'd be difficult to make a more restrictive buffer zone with respect to footage. So if you wanted to make it a 600 foot buffer zone, it would be hard, making it less restrictive, but it would be more Okay, so when you when you when you uh, have this correspondence with him, That's you were fairly right. specific on your asks, though. You didn't say how much can we move away from. So as I basically as copy copied the definition from DPH, the buffer zone definition yep. from DPH, and then added a definition for where children come and come. It was adopted from uh, right the 2014 definition. Uh, there was no definition in 2014. Problem. The virtual economy. So no, that's the Yes. 2014, 500 foot buffer. Correct. And the way it was measured. Meaning, Bert, Bert, uh, you know, that was out of scope. That was out of scope. I think to, to town council's point is that if you actually measure, you know, the distance of bird travels, that's more restrictive than the way it person Right. So walked. if we went even with the DPH version of 500 feet, it would be out of scope as well. We are far out of schedule here. We're still right here. So if you want to allow public comment, so at this point, I will take that. Uh, same rules apply. Please raise your hand. I'll call on you. Stand up. State your name and address. Yes, sir. Hi. Uh, my name is Peter Ricks. I, uh, I'm a resident of Arlington. I live on Melrose Street. And uh, I just it just seems to me, I don't know all the ins and outs, as you all do, I'm sure, but it just seems completely reasonable and responsible, a location that's being proposed on Water Street. Um, I know speaking for myself, I'm someone, I, uh, I was diagnosed with MS 15 years ago, and I would love to see this located here. Like I said, it seems responsible and reasonable for me, and uh, having the convenient access uh, off of Mass Ave, for medical marijuana seems uh, something that I would like as a resident. Uh, I have two young kids, so I understand concerns people might have, but I don't think they're founded here, and uh, I don't know, I just want to express my support. Uh, that's it, thank you. Thank you. Sir. Christopher Moore, 80 School Street, Arlington. Um, I'd like to uh, express support for making this work somehow. Um, but suggest to the board that you consider being quite inclusive in the locations that you restrict, and then shrink the buffer zone to a level that you think is reasonable, a reasonable balance between the goal of uh, providing 
a, a reasonable number of sites in the town, as well as protecting the children. So inclusive on what what uh, site what sites uh, count as places children congregate or, or sites that you restrict, but shrink the zone in order to make it work. Thank you. Uh, Christine Mondre, I'm the Health and Human Services Director here in town. Um, I provided you with a letter from the Board of Health. I'm here representing the Board of Health. I just want to clarify a few issues. Um, the Board looked at um, regulations and uh, buffer zones at, uh, from cities and towns and states across the country. So, um, so what was included here, the parks and playgrounds came from, I believe, Washington State. There were pieces pulled, um, best practices from across the country. Um, so that was really what was, what was put in here. I think the Board of Health felt strongly that they appreciated the warrant article. However, they felt that the daycares um, not being included in really clarifying the, the places where children commonly congregate um, may have been lacking. So I think that's, that's the reason behind this letter. Um, so thank you for the opportunity to submit comments. Thank you. Sorry. Jason, thank you for letting me speak. Um, I'm glad that the town is um, trying to at least go on record um, with whether there is a buffer zone or not, and trying to clear up some of this ambiguity. Um, I think it's a good effort. I don't think this is the right vehicle to do it. Um, I think given the fact that it originated with the proponents of this um, dispensary, um, and the fact that the limits on the scope in which we can amend this uh, kind of limit the debate. Uh, I appreciate um, uh, town council's efforts on this, and I appreciate the fact that we're you know, following the democratic process, but I really think it actually limits the democratic process by having this as the vehicle. Um, I would urge a no action uh, recommendation on this uh, uh, article uh, and have to ask the board to come back after the special town meeting uh, and really sit down and try to craft something that works for the town, balances all the interests of the town. Uh, there's certainly interest to in having a medical marijuana dispensary here in town. Uh, but there's also other interests as well. And I think this um, this amendment, or this warrant article does not balance those interests. I think it really only answers, answers the interests of the proponent, um, who obviously has a financial stake in this. Thank you. Okay. The comments, questions, concerns from the public? So, right. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chris Goretti, uh, 56 Adams Street. I'd also like to thank the proponents for bringing this article forward. Frankly, it's something I think the town should have done long ago, and I'm disappointed to really see the lack of leadership among town boards. The state gave the town the authority to set their own buffer zones, and certainly as soon as the ambiguity was known this summer in the state's interpretation of its own regulation, um, the town should have done that. And I think what we're running into here is a problem that occurs when you let the regulated write their own regulations. Now, somebody mentioned a thousand foot buffer zone. We haven't talked about that. You know what that's for? That's to prevent competition from getting within a thousand feet of this facility. And that's really what seems to be the, the most important aspect of buffer zones to this applicant. Uh, the other thing I want to emphasize is that this buffer zone regulation doesn't come close to um, meeting the level of stringency that is in the state default buffer zone. <laughs> At the time, I was under the impression a, uh, you know, applied at least until August. And, you know, someone raised the question about what does this mean? Is, why did you put in this DESC supervision? I didn't hear a clear, clear answer to that. The town is now saying that they believe that this, um, <coughs> this applies both to public and private schools. I'm not so sure. And I think the town is using a very generous definition of what supervision, DESC supervision is. Um, because private schools are not under the supervision of the DESC as it's commonly understood. And uh, you know, I won't say any more about that, but that, I see that as a real problem <coughs> that it's written. Um, the, I also wanted to mention that we were provided with figures, a couple maps. Um, this bylaw does not apply to, to this facility. It applies to any facility in any B3 or B5 zoning districts. And we have B3 zoning districts in Arlington Heights and in East Arlington, they're not shown there. The B3 zoning district isn't shown on your map for Arlington Center. So there's a lot more to this than I think you're being presented uh, you know, in the information that you've received. And I'd like to refer you, um, you know, specifically to one of the comments of the Board of Health. <coughs> uh, the Board of Health felt that the proposed the proposal lacks important aspects that are included in 105 CMR 725. 
That is the state buffer zone that the town thought applied um, you know, until this August. So clearly they see the shortcomings of this proposal as well. Um, and you know, we talked about the, uh, the lack of daycare facilities being included unless they happen to be in the same building. And we've also talked about the lack of definition of any facilities, any other facilities where children to come and, come and congregate, those are now excluded. I would suggest that the reason the applicant's putting forward the article as it is now is that their facility didn't, didn't conform to the state regulation as it existed, or, or as it currently exists, and I thought continue to apply in Arlington. <coughs> and in particular, there's a daycare facility at the Unitarian Church. Um, I believe it did operate in the past. It may not have been operating at the time that they submitted their application because of construction work that was going on. <laughs> they submitted a permit application for doing some construction to restart that school, and I think that may have occurred before the application to your board. Um, similarly, there is a children's library located in the main library. I believe that also applies, and I think the applicant and Anton Council are not properly reading the DECD and the uh, Department of Public Health's interpretation of its own regulation. That's a facility dedicated to children's use. I believe that also applies. So, um, you know, we have here is a situation where um, you, you're being put forth with an article that's clearly put forth for this proponent's benefit, but it's one that doesn't meet the standards of the state buffer zone as the state defined it. And, I think the prop, your proper course of action is to build no action and to work from up the town's own buffer zone that will apply throughout the town and be at least as protective as the state regulation is as the Department of Public Health is requested. Okay. Thank you. The comments. Yes, sir. <coughs> Dave Dabrowski, 36 Brunswick Road. Uh, I would like to recommend that there be uh, no buffer zone. Uh, I don't think it serves uh, much of a point. Um, one, uh, prices at these medical uh, dispensaries are higher uh, than the black market, so people aren't going to be resell reselling this. Uh, two, uh, people going to these marijuana dispensaries are, um, are going through a licensing process, paying fees. They're doing this the legal way. Uh, you know, they're, you know, they're not uh, de de degenerates. <coughs> so, um, you know, I don't think the buffer zone uh, serves much of a point, and uh, I think uh, I recommend no action. Thank you. Thank you. So can I ask um, just one question? The, the applicants talked about um, disclosure, and you know, one of the things that's in the background here, um, at least on the town side, is the $300, $300,000 a year payment potentially that they could be making to the town should their facility be allowed to locate here. Um, I hope you've seen the stories in the Boston Globe about um, applicants coming before the zoning board or the planning board in Boston um, giving financial consideration either to nonprofits, either for supporting particular proposals that they're putting forward or not opposing them. And I'm wondering, Mr. Chairman, if we could ask through you two questions. One, whether this applicant would identify uh, any persons or nonprofit organizations or any entities that they may be providing payments to in addition to the town itself um, to either support this article or their facility and two, um, whether they would be willing to testify uh, under oath to that effect. I don't think that's really within our purview, but I'll let the return. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I would defer to the town council on, you know, whether whether that's, you know, for a subject for tonight. We spent significant time working with the town to make sure that we are all, you know, in full light. And I don't really see. But everything I say is uh, essentially under oath. So. No, no, I, mean, I, don't mean, I don't mean you. I mean, <laughs> Well, we are seeing it. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? I'm, I'm concerned uh, that uh, we want the, that that we're moving in a direction that is different from where town meeting uh, thought this was going uh, when we changed the zoning to to permit RMDs in, in the first place, and uh, I. It, with all due respect to the proponent and the uh, concern that this is tailored to uh, to limit any potential secondary market, uh, if we look at what some of the other communities have done, that clearly wasn't their only concern uh, in the other communities. Uh, 
Texas because they included many other locations uh, where children were not present. And I, I think we haven't, here in Arlington, uh, given sufficient consideration to what, what are the legitimate concerns of Arlington's citizens. Uh, you know, is, is a secondary market a real concern? Uh, you know, is uh, proximity of children to the facility at all uh, a legitimate concern that we need to regulate? Uh, and uh, I, I had noticed the, the 1,000 foot buffer uh, between our entities that Mr. Moretti mentioned, and, and I'm also concerned about what, what the full purpose of, of that is. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, I, I would uh, recommend that. Uh, as a community, uh, find a way to make this work. We clearly need to make it work somehow. Um, and, and there are tools at our disposal, uh, uh, such as shrinking the distances while perhaps adding in additional categories if we think they're worthy of, of protection. But uh, I don't think we've had that discussion yet. That's what's said. Any other comments? Yeah. Uh, so, from my perspective, I think, you know, we did, we did go through this uh, both on the board as well as town meeting uh, when the original uh, bylaw was written. And unfortunately, the state has kind of uh, taken a few different paths here, which is disappointing to say the least. Um, but I do think no action is appropriate. Um, because of the fact that town meeting really had a different uh, set of intentions, I believe. Um, and we are severely limited by how this Warren article has been presented in trying to either interpret um, what it was that we think that town meeting meant by it and to um, provide a, um, uh, a vote in support of something that might get that. Um, but working with this and it, it's probably not going to do the trick from my perspective. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I don't think, I have more, I thought some good comments came out of the year. I actually don't think <coughs> a buffer zone may, may not be the correct application for a correct instrument for Arlington. And I want to give ourselves the ability to go in front of the town meeting potentially. I mean, we're a smaller, we're a different kind of a town. Our downtown area may be the appropriate place to have the most observation, the most proximity to other services which are pedestrian friendly, so to speak, or, or well-trodden paths, well-lit parking lots and so forth. That's the way it may best function for us. And this could be a very a benefit to the town because it's a, it's a medical a medical office. It's a medical facility. So I would, I think, ironically or contradictorily, I'm going against this motion. I'd like to go no action. But I see a lot of benefits in that location that they propose. So at this point, that's as far as I can get knowing what I know. I think I agree with everything that's been said. David, I'll let you speak, but I also like to. It's just one, one, one question, and this may be out of scope for this conversation, but um, uh, with uh, the, the current uh, uh, ballot measure uh, coming up for vote statewide on recreational marijuana, uh, my understanding is that uh, existing RMDs would get preferential treatment if that were to come to pass? And uh, does the proponent have any intention of uh, moving forward with the sale of recreational marijuana if that were to become legal in Massachusetts? It's out of, it's a little bit out of scope. I'll let you give a brief, brief answer because we've heard a lot of public comment about that. But again, I don't, I mean, I don't need to address. If you'd like, we can chat about it afterwards. I don't need to address it uh, you know, in the public forum, but I will if, if the chairman and if the board wants me to. I certainly have some 
some strong thoughts about how, you know, what the limitations are for anybody to sell non-medical cannabis out of that location, if you'd like to hear them, but I don't want to, you know, the chairman mentioned I'll, I'll defer to the chair. Yeah. <clears throat> I think we've heard sort of loud and clear what we're looking for and what direction we'd like to head this in to see this, this go. So I would ask for a motion. Yeah. Uh, I'll move uh, that we recommend a vote of no action on uh, our article. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, members of the board. We do have a significant amount of business to take care of still, so I'd ask that any discussion on Kagan outside, uh, down in the hallway, outside, up the hallway, would be better. Most travelers are still on, on the record here. Um, <laughs> Yeah. 
have two or three managers that have MLS BES and then the rest of it would just be local, local people. I mean, it sounds like you've thought about it. I appreciate we, that. We, the hours of endless meetings we have talking about our employees, how we're going to treat them, what we're going to do. You know, we try to become active members of the community. Uh, obviously, we work with the historical community. We took over an old historic train station. The landlord didn't want to get it registered because it was just in too much grief and aggravation for him. So we work with the historical committee. We pay for them to put up plaques talking about the building. You know. Um, we, we paid to have pictures put up how the building, how the train station used to look. Um, we work with all communities. Andover, we have we close down uh, annually for the um, the marching band to hold fundraisers. You know, once a year we give them the whole store at night, and you know they have fundraisers in there. So we try to work with Chief Jamaica Plain. We have a location, all the local ladder tank stuff in there for sale. We work with all communities. We're not just we're in it for the long run to make friends with the communities and be part of the community, not just be, you know, come in, get your coffee, and see you later, thanks for coming in. That's not what we're about. It's, I mean, if you have any of you have been to our locations, they're very comfortable. You know, our Wi Fi is by far the best, far none. You go in there, you can download <laughs> eight minutes like it's, like it's nothing. And we encourage you to go sit down for three or four hours and, and relax and have a cup of coffee. You know, that's just, what well, it's a European coffee house. It's not a, it's not a, you know, it's not a Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts where you get your coffee and you go. You know, we want you to turn this down and relax a few hours. Um, just a couple of things. Uh, number one, is, I, I see you've included plans on the outside seating yep. and that type of thing. That isn't our uh, purview. That's the only thing. Yeah, yeah, we, 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 we know we still have to okay, work. Okay. It's just part of the calculation. Just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. because I just want to make sure there was no confusion on that. Um, it looks like, uh, so you've got the the signage out front, the, the sign on the top. So yeah. what is that exactly? It's it's an honor. It's No, the one on top of the honor. Oh, the actual the letters. Actual oh, uh, letters. Okay. letters. It should be applied letters. So applied letters, yep. a back lid, or how would that work? Um, I don't know, what does it just say? It just says internally lit. It says internally lit, but then you're looking at this and it's black. Yeah, I think I can tell that it's going. Uh, that particular style is is normally backlit. But we have no problem doing uh, goosenecks like you see at Common Ground. Yeah. Well, and, and that was my question. That's actually. a blade What sign. is that? That's a blade sign. What's that for? Oh, sorry. So, that, that was my point. It, that, that was my next question. Is this is okay, so what's that? Sign about the awning. Uh, no, that would not go above the honor. That would go. That, that's the one I couldn't figure out what it was. Yeah. But but I I guess the point is is, is on the. This one still says the same thing. Here it is. But this one does say it. So it is the blade side right there. Oh, so that's sticking out. Yep. Okay. Something like that. That's one of our traditional things that we could adopt in America. In America. Okay. Um, this is more European. This is what we do in Europe. Now, when you say backlit, so that means that the light is coming around the letters. That means it'll be yeah, it'll be internally lit, so it's sort of the light comes through the letters. Okay, and, and what color will the letters be? Um, so those are those letters are copper and black. So it must glow from the back. From the back. Yeah. So and it just kind of it's just glowing behind. It's glowing behind. Like it's you not. you would see um, so in between the copper and the black, you just see a light. Okay. A light. Okay, but the whole, is it, the whole C isn't the whole C isn't lit up. No, 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 no. It's okay, it's a black letter. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay. I'm, I'm channeling Bruce. <laughs> Why not? Um, okay. Actually, I, I like the design. I, I thought I thought it made sense. Uh, I really didn't have much else, so I'm, I'm happy to hear. It doesn't sound like a a um, a formal uh, transportation plan. Um, it certainly sounds like they're giving thought to it. Yes. No, we, we, no, I don't mean, um, My concern, jump a little bit on the turn here, sorry. My concern is um, deliveries, traffic, trash in the alley behind the building that where you'll, you'll impact mm -hmm. some of the abutting streets and neighborhoods. How do you plan to manage that? Yep. So, um, again, we're not, we're not, we're not about to go into Starbucks. We don't have an 18 wheel that goes and services 12 different locations. We, we will we, we seek out small local bakeries 
you know, they have a good product and we buy off of them. And they, they come in very small vehicles, um, eight wheelers usually. You know, you don't see very, very live vehicles with them usually. They're all smaller vehicles. They'll come in usually at 6 o'clock in the morning, 5.30 in the morning, drop off. You know, our managers are always there. And then you know, they leave. You'll never see an 18 wheel pull up out front of one of our locations and, and drop off and go to the next location. We don't operate like that. We, we encourage local businesses. You know, we use uh, milk distributed from this area. We use local bakeries. Uh, the only thing that we import ourselves, and it'll come on small trucks, is we, we own our own roasteries. And so we, it'll move all of our coffee is shipped from Italy for our, for our two, uh, centralized location and distributed. And then again, it's still distributed in small vehicles. Nothing, we don't, nothing comes to us in large vehicles. As far as trash goes, um, we prefer um, the 94-gallon road-proof tin bins. I think they're cleaner. They're easy to clean out. They're easy to maintain and manage versus the two or three-yard dumpsters. Um, some towns don't, don't have that. Some towns do. Uh, it depends upon the location. So we usually put, we, we will still put a dumpster pad and a closure, and we do trash pickup six days a week. Who do you use, who will you use? Um, waste management, waste management is probably in this area. Usually operation will find someone. By the time we get to help, usually it's on the health department form. They'll ask you who you're gonna use, how often, what are you gonna put your, your trash in. Have you, have you given any consideration to working with some of the other similar businesses in that area to coordinate trash service that you're not impacting the neighborhood at a different schedule than some of those other. Yeah, if, I mean, if Common Ground has someone that they're using, and we can use them as well, fantastic. You know, they're there already, anyways. Okay. Yeah, that's all I have. Thank you. I'd like that. <coughs> okay. Well, I was going to ask one more question. I really support this. I think it's a good nice fit for this area here. But uh, Mike said that we don't we can't comment on the outside space. Well, I, you can you can comment, but I just can't don't have any, we don't have any priority. Okay. I just just the yeah you know the post you have the base plate. Yep. I was wondering if you just offset those base plates so they always say inside the space, not outside. So it's not That's a fair. Um, I believe this location you're showing clampers. Um, I, just, I see these. Right. Is he showing? Is he showing all planters? Oh, it's okay. Right. Okay. So we're showing planters here. So the only place you really have and the is just right. on the is on the outside corners. Yeah, we can. Yeah, those can easily be uh, offset. But I would prefer to do it actually, and I don't know why he didn't draw it this way. I would prefer that these planters are on the ends and we get rid of those base plates completely because they really don't, cool. so. they really don't do a very good job. Yeah, yeah. I used to thought of as a trip pass. Yeah, yeah, it is. And, and you're right, even inside or outside. It's just, you know what, and they don't sit well on brick. No. 12 by 12 plates, they tend to rock a little bit on the brick. I would rather I would rather redesign this a little bit and uh, and have those put on corners. That didn't come from us, right? No, no, no. We, well, we just, oh, no, we just can't. Can't. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah we can. Yeah, yeah. We just can't require it. Okay. That's, and then also, is that stuff going to be stored inside the storage area? Yep. The so those will all go in the storage area out back at the end of the season um, and brought back out. Um, we have professional people take care of our landscape, you know, plant through the plant if we don't do it ourselves. And um, you know, yellow managers to make sure that water is looking nice. And so there's no cooking on the premises, right? There's no what? Cooking. There is, um, there is some. So it's, we reheat croissants. Okay, that's definitely, I'm talking about, you don't fry, you don't need a lot no, of no, 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 no fry oils. No, no, no fry oils. No, no fry oils, no grills. Okay. We have an electric oven for, for pastries, reheating pastries, things like that. Yeah, I'll just wait up. Yeah, yeah, no, we don't, there's no black iron. It's, it's all, the only hood we have in, in our kitchen is for heat reduction, just keep the heat, get, get some of that heat out of the kitchen. Weren't there some hot sandwiches on the menu? Hmm? Weren't there some hot sandwiches on the menu? There is, a paninis. How are those for delicious? <laughs> you gotta try them as well. I, I will. Um, so, yeah, so, uh, so it's all prepared meats, they, they, and again, will come from a local distributor. And, um, 
you know, we keep them in our, in our walk in, and they, they, we'll make, we make sandwiches, <coughs> different types of sandwiches, have them already pre done out in, our, out in the display case. So you walk in, you pick out the sandwich, it gets put on a panini grill, and cooked on a panini grill. So our panini grills, right, are microwaves and ovens at the same time. $7,000 a piece for these things. They will cook a panini perfect, toasted on both sides, and warm in the middle in 45 seconds. They're, they're amazing. You should have brought samples. Mm -hmm. I should have brought samples. The Italian is unbelievable. I love it. <laughs> it really is. It's really good. So is this approval for the build up and the signage too? Same thing or? Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, I'll open it to public comment, questions, concerns. Uh, same rules as always. Please stand up, state your name and address. Uh, good evening, members of the board. My name is Michael Ruderman. Uh, my wife Susan and I are here tonight. We live on Alton Street, uh, number nine Alton Street, which uh, in terms of location is uh, uh, just a few footsteps from the corner of Alton and Broadway. In fact, uh, our front porch faces down the alley that runs behind the commercial block where uh, the proposed uh, cafe is, lo is to be located. Uh, we think it's a great addition to the neighborhood, looking forward to seeing it come. Uh, our concerns are about, as uh, Mr. Bennell uh, mentioned, uh, uh, traffic and noise. The bins that Mr. Kidder mentioned, I believe, are quieter than, than a metal dumpster being hauled out by waste management at um, the hours of the morning that uh, they, they tend to operate. Are, so, they, doing, are they doing the um, common ground now? Uh, I'm not sure whose dumpsters they're pulling out, but sometimes they are... Jared, so, sometimes they are well before dawn, and the clatter of that metal being hauled out on, on chains is, is a rude awakening. Not just for us across the alley, but for the, uh, I think it's seven or eight families uh, whose, whose uh, residences uh, line that alley, too. Uh, we would like the board to incorporate in, in whatever approval it, it uh, deems uh, warranted here uh, a very succinct note that the uh, management staff and vendors uh, of the establishment will simply observe the posted traffic regulations as they exist uh, today on Alton Street. So it sounds good to have, have the assurance of small vehicles coming, small vehicles that I would take to be uh, of sufficiently small size to negotiate that alley and deliver in there and not be parked on the street uh, blocking the alley, blocking people's driveways uh, in marked no parking areas, which Alton Street is at that end, uh, simply to incorporate in your approval, if you, if you issue one, uh, the requirement that, that the establishment and its vendors obtain <coughs> the marked parking regulations. Thank you. companies to work with their vendors to post notices yep. saying this is a neighborhood, please abide by uh, neighborhood courtesy rules and have traffic laws, yep. etc. Absolutely. To do that. That yep. satisfies some of the concerns. Oh, I think that's fair. Absolutely. I wouldn't want to wake up at 5 in the morning playing and bang the steel lunches. Other questions? Concerns? Turn back to the board. Um, I'll uh, move to approve the application for uh, 321 Broadway um, as uh, presented for uh, Cafe Warren. Um, as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Sounds like a great project. Yeah. Thank you. Great.
Thank you. I will close the public uh, hearing on the special permit. And move on to the director's report. Okay. All right. Um, very quickly, I submitted a report. Um, just a couple quick little changes. I mean, so celebrate some good news. I've hired two people. Um, one economic development coordinator, Allison Carter. She's going to be starting on November 14th. And then Julie Wayman. She's going to start on actually November 7th. It says the 2nd. Change the date to the 7th. Um, as the community development block grant uh, administrator. And that's uh, that brings us to almost a full staff <laughs> after nine months. I know um, so, so that's kind of thrilling news. I, I said you earlier, I know Allie. She's a great hire. She was very well. Yeah, Allie sure. is very excited for both of sure start. As well, I don't know her first. Yeah. Anyway. Um, and I think I mentioned last time the Conservation Administrator, Corey Beckwith, is um, leaving the town and within the next month. We've posted the position. Of course, if you know anybody who might be interested in a part-time administrator position, please forward the advertisement. The shop closes in the next couple of weeks. We anticipate the um, interviews will begin on the 14th. Um, and then I've just got a couple of project updates here. Um, the only just quick um, modification to what I put in my report is that the zoning recodification bids are now due on Friday. October 21st, um, instead of tomorrow, needed to extend the deadline. And uh, we're still going to be con um, conducting the interviews um, November 3rd. And um, then just a couple of updates on capital planning. I've met with capital planning, and um, the big ask, as you may know, is for this wonderful space that we're in right now for the Senior Center. Um, the request is for about $4 million in capital funds, including um, also about $400,000 for design and construction document fees. Um, that would be in the next year. So I may be asking some of you to help with um, that ask in the next week or two. Um, I'll let you know, of course. And then on the back, I've put in some updates to just upcoming meetings, if anybody's interested. One thing that's coming up soon, uh, this Saturday, is the residential study group, which was mentioned earlier. They're having some site visits that start this Saturday morning at 9.30 in the morning. If you're interested in learning more about that, I'm glad to send around a little more. Um, I'll have like an itinerary of where we're going. So just let me know all of this is public. And then also just the last thing is, so the reason we started at 6.30 p.m. tonight is because we originally thought, sorry about that. We originally thought that we were going to have, I think, one or two more hearings tonight. Ended up that those hearings are now on November 7th. So on November 7th, you've got the continued RMD hearing, just so you know. Um, so the, the, some of the conversation we had tonight is going to happen again on the 7th. And then two more, uh, three more hearings happening that evening. So uh, we start at 7.30 p.m., as always. But um, I was trying to accommodate more hearings by starting a little bit earlier. That's up to you. We just sort of made that amendment internally. And then, of course, like, I'd let you know. I moved to 7 for the 7th, but not seven. 6 Oh, we've, uh, we've already, we already closed the hearings. We already closed the hearings. I'm just letting you know that it's it's a lot going on that evening, but it starts at 7:30. Yeah, we cannot actually repost anything. Yeah, no, sorry. If it's, anything else comes up, we can put it before. That's what I was about to say. We oh, can, oh, we can yeah, do yeah, another hearing. Yeah, that's, 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 that's not the case. Anyway, yeah. okay. Uh, while we're on the director's report, yes. we should talk about the report to town meeting. Okay, sure. I don't know if any members of the board has any comments on what is to find to be submitted. Uh, whether we need to vote on it. You do need to vote on that, thank you. I completely forgot. So I gave you a so, the report to special town meeting. The, I mean, the highlighted areas are obviously some of the things that we need to change. And then, of course, if you have any questions about the content, I don't know, Mike. Yeah, so mm -hmm. um, once again, I am sorry I was late uh, and I was not here. Removal. However, it did have some changes that I'll pass along anyway because it sounds like the ultimate outcome was what I expected and would have supported. Um, in the first paragraph of the issue summary recommendation yeah. on rock removal, I would suggest on, um, let me see, uh, one, two, three, four, five lines up from the bottom of the first, of the first paragraph of the issue summary, yeah. where it says methods can create public health and uh, safety. Yeah. This is going to sound stupid, but I would I would switch can with may. 
Okay. And then I would actually lose from wild vibrations mm -hmm. with the rest of that paragraph, as well as the whole uh, next paragraph, because I don't think we need to kind of get into the issue. The issue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I was trying to kind of no, I appreciate I, I'm it. I'm incredibly sympathetic about the issue, and I, I you know, didn't have a chance to speak about it right. in our hearing, but that's why I think it's important to recognize that, but I understand your point. Yeah, and I guess I don't want to, I, I don't, <clears throat> think, I wasn't here, but I'm assuming we didn't decide that it is a hazard, so, um, it, you know, that's, I guess, one of my concerns, so. So I would, uh, I would lose that next paragraph uh, in additional hazard, blah, blah, blah. Um, then I would say, uh, in the next paragraph, these issues have created the impetus for um, uh, the article to strengthen requirements. Okay. This article yes. to strengthen requirements right. for public notice. Okay. And then at the end of that uh, same paragraph, mm -hmm. uh, opportunity to review a proposal such as Article 6, but has not been provided. And I think it's the opportunity it's to do so. They never even approached the residential committee, did they? No, not at all. No. It's, it's actually it's, Article, it's 10. Article 6. It's uh, Article 10. I it's Article, oh, sorry, it's Article 10. It's a mistake. Sorry, so <laughs> Article 10, but has not been provided the opportunity to do so. No, it's, it's not just it's a time. Been, it's not about time. It's, right. it's been brought up in discussions in those meetings. Uh, it's on the agenda, and I explained this in here. It's on the agenda as something to look at as we approach the spring town meeting. But the, the proponent of this article has not come to so that and that's why I would say the opportunity. Yeah, no, I, I think you're right. It's, it's not about time. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I think I think that's all I had. I mean, I, I like the different uh, things. It does go into quite a bit of detail, I, I will say. But, yeah, uh, I was trying to, um, and I see Article 6 again. I was trying to um, illustrate to you the problems with the bylaw as proposed. Um, and also, frankly, to eventually maybe make some recommendations that we could address in the future. So, that's the reason for the on and on. Yeah, I, know, I wasn't here for the discussion, so I can't that's, that's what I, know, I, I just that one. Um, So I, I had that, and then, do you want to just do Article 10 right now, or and then move to Article 11? Do that. Does anyone else have comments on Article 10? This one earlier comment about uh, who decides what is exempt and not exempt. Right now, it's, it's stated as go to the ZBA. Well, it's, yeah. our vote is for no action right. as of early tonight. So, so the, the way that it would work is anything goes, anything that goes to the ZBA goes to the building inspector first, and the building inspector decides that it does not meet the requirements of the zoning bylaw, so therefore it needs either a variance or a special permit for whatever reasons that he determines. But that's, the, way he that's part of the way he explained it, the way it's been here, it's not that. I understand. But that, that is the way the bylaw is supposed Correct. to work. So, I don't think he answered that question, actually. Any other comments on the report? Comments on Article 11. So, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, Article 11, I, I guess, I, uh, I don't know, I should have written something up, but, uh, but I think we should say. I wrote a lot of our conversation down, obviously. I have prepared this, but yeah, you know, we I, kind of diverted here. I, I, like, I like what I say. <laughs> 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 I made a lot of statements, but I didn't write it down. Yeah. I mean, I, I, my own personal view is, is <coughs> I'd like to say something about the town meeting's original intent. And the limitations of this particular article to live up to that original intent. That's that's why I um, voted no action on this. That's, that was covered part of it. Yeah, that was yeah. part of it. I mean, part of it was also the discussion of what is really important to Arlington. Um, you know, is is there a need for a buffer zone? If so. What should be included in the scope of the buffer zone? Because it's, it, you know, some of the buffer zones in other communities are much broader in scope and cover lots of different places where there are children present. I mean, it's very clear that their intention is to keep dispensaries away from children. Period. Um, and 
that is not what uh, uh, either the, the, um, the literal or stated intention of the component is here. Here it's specifically to prevent uh, secondary sales. try to just come up with two sentences that describe it, frankly, because I think otherwise with it being tomorrow night, I, I think know. you're going to be yeah, Wednesday, Wednesday night. Uh, or Wednesday, Wednesday night, sorry. I've so I've got those two, you know, rough, rough but, out of those two sentences. Is that enough or? Yeah, I, I mean, I guess, I guess with respect to your conversation, um, that uh, um, I think once again, it comes back to, if, if we kind of concentrate on the article as presented, it's very limited yes. in what we can discuss mm -hmm. and what we can allow for town meeting to discuss. Right. So I think that if you, to put yours maybe in a little bit different way, is to say that the article as uh, uh, presented does not allow for the uh, fulsome discussion uh, that beyond what it is that was previously determined by the town meeting, it doesn't provide for uh, a mechanism to have a, a lot of <coughs> discussion around yeah. uh, these important issues for the town, or something like that. Okay. It, I don't know. I understand. It, it, it's yeah. I mean, it's just reframing that it oh. it it doesn't as as written. It doesn't allow us to talk about these important factors in the decision of what to do. Exactly. And exactly. There's that. But before that. You Want to say, don't you want to say, we, we need to state the basis of the town meeting agreement? Well, I actually, when we are argue, arguing without quite knowing, uh, putting on in paper, it should say the following was agreed to in the 2014 town well, meeting. It was understood. It was understood. Town meeting yes. actually, actually, I think that time it was understood. And, and the, the two zones came out of it with the understanding that the current state, which is the same as the Board of Health, 500 foot buffer, et cetera, et cetera, would be. But would that warrant Why? represent? Yeah. Why I say that? Why well, to say that? So yeah. I think it's one thing to well, suggest that it's, to it's, I'm sorry, it's different than whatever town meeting, whatever the original intent was. But I think it's another thing to just focus on the article as presented, which I think that language is good, yeah. and doesn't allow for the full, broader discussion that we wish to have, which then gets back to whatever that original town meeting discussion actually was, which we all don't necessarily need to pick at what that exactly was, but the do. memory is that you didn't have this depth of conversation at that time, and so therefore, this doesn't allow you to continue that conversation now, correct? Well, actually, see, I think that's, you? that's a, yeah, we, we actually did. did. Okay. Uh, we did. What? We did have a conversation about, the about what was important. About what was important, okay. and, the fact, yeah. and the fact that, yeah, yeah. And I think. So I, then, why wasn't the bylaw written with that in mind, or do you think it was? It was okay. So once again, the reason why, and I don't think Doug was here at the time. I think it was. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it was the 2012. Yeah, <coughs> it was exactly. at, the, at the time, and we were told that if if we wrote a buffer zone in. That it would be disallowed. Okay. We were actually told that it would be disallowed, and that the way to keep a buffer zone would be, or or we were at risk that the buffer zone would be um, deemed to be uh, too exclusive mm -hmm. and uh, and prohibitory, uh, so that we would not actually get the benefit of the buffer zone. Right. So we were told the better course is to stay silent, because if you stayed silent, then you got the benefit of the state buffer zone. And this was under the state guidance, so not because yes. of the town meeting discussion per se. Well, if that, that was discussed at town meeting, it came up at town meeting, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because they said, why isn't there a buffer or something? Mm -hmm. And it was described at town meeting as, well, there isn't a buffer zone on purpose because if we write one in, we're at, because no one knew what would happen. That's right. Mm -hmm. I remember that whole discussion. Right? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. You, you may have even spoken to it. I think I did. Yeah. That's why I remember it so well. So, um, so, so from that perspective, mm -hmm. like I, I think, I think we could have a now that we have a little bit more learning about what each of these things is, maybe we can have a, a more full discussion. A more, yeah. 
somehow I want to say referencing, referencing the initiation of 2014. Yeah, 2012, 2012, right? 2012. Okay. Sorry. 2012. 2012. 2012. Yeah. It's, it's fine. Uh, because what he said, this guy said, was um, it's out of scope even to go back. Well, that's the problem. This is really limiting how they because they didn't they didn't just use the tagline or anything yeah. you know exactly too too limited but. yeah yeah they they so narrowly tailored it that we can't even really talk about it. right well that's right and they didn't add the the usual language that says or any matter related there too or something like that right, right. usually you you toss that on at the end of a Warren article and then you can kind of go a little bit further and add a little. And, and the 2012 is relevant too because of this measurement thing. Because it's both the measurement as well yeah. as the uh, conservation. Correct, right. Because yeah, the, the DPH reg was both broader in scope and it uses a straight line. Right. Right. Yeah, I think it we'll applies versus this. We need a consultant just to go through what this means and map it out as you've done, Jay. Right. Just to understand that before we could even possibly agree to that. I would never vote on that without really understanding it. Yeah, because basically that, that that creates a buffer zone that's not a circle. It's, it's yeah. you know, some right. amorphous it's, shape. It's not <laughs> on, uh, you do a, when you do fire code uh, travel distances, that's what we do. So if you're escaping from a fire, <coughs> you walk around furniture and around the that's the only thing I can relate to. Well, yeah, to. I mean, it's like a, tra it's like a transit catchment here. It's like the <laughs> ideal is a circle, but the reality cool. is yeah. 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 more bay. So I have that um, you know, sentence or two, just making it clear how limited the article is and that that you know, sort of uh, prevented fuller discussion about um, what should be included in the buffer zone. Is there anything else that you want me to include in the report? Do yeah. we need to separately say, I mean, do, or, do we need to say anything at all about the, the other buffer between RMDs that's in there? Um, I, I didn't mention that. I don't, I don't think so. I think we should be prepared to answer that question, but. Well, no, I mean, so, so let's be clear. No motion. So long as, so I would not expect there to be substitute motions. I don't, I, don't, I don't have the expectation that there will be. Yeah, I, I would yeah, so they don't have that. No, actually, no, I think hard to make. Is there something on the floor? Right, yeah, and I, 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 I would be surprised. There's no place. Because on, 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 on the map that, that we were talking yeah. about, it shows that thousand foot, and it extends so far into, into the other, uh, into the other, uh, the other yeah. five zones, that it would effectively preclude Another dispensary from opening yeah, for in most of that space, even if there was a location yeah. that was why I, I agree that I think the purpose of that was to monopolize a little bit. However, it also is not a terrible idea to say in one B three B five zone we only want one. Of the well, yeah, they could, they could they so could so actually they, pitch it as a benefit. Oh, I think they have. Yeah. I think I, that's exactly what they have done. Yeah. But having said that, I don't know personally. I think you just to some extent pick it there that you don't need to pick if it's a no action vote. So, yeah. so. I think it's covered by the other statement. Okay. Do you, do you think you have enough chance? I think I have a enough. Yeah, I will, I'll send it around again. Yeah, you, you did it where you sent it around around noon time or something. We could all be poised. I'll send it by probably well, tomorrow. Yeah, I have to submit the report by, the, by basically I think the end. <coughs> I think that's when we have. Yeah, we're already laid on our report. So <laughs> I mean, at this point. Well, I mean, it's yeah. Okay. But we would like to, you know, ideally post it before time meeting, right? Yes. So. Yeah, they can send it up to the town meeting. Once. That's what Joan wants to do. Joan will do that mm -hmm. tomorrow. So, yeah, I'd like comments by me. Um, and I'll do my best to get this to you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So, town meeting is what time on Wednesday? Eight. Eight. Are we supposed to be there? Yeah. Okay. Yes, ideally, yes. Okay. One series. Yes. Is that a date then? Yeah. I'm curious as to where else. I know, I think we're probably going to be back on the day. Yeah.
This one. All right, so now you've got your minutes. Okay. <laughs> if you're done with my report. Are you yeah. done? I'm done with my report. Okay, yes. thank you. Minutes okay. from the last meeting. I didn't have any comments. No, they look good. I move to approve the minutes of uh, September 26. Second. All in favor? Aye. I, I, I'm, I'm going to abstain. You sure? Feel free. Uh, any other business? Any else? Yeah, I, look, just a, another apology. Sorry I was late. Uh, I should have done it while everyone was here, but welcome to David Watson. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Sorry, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There was no intro. There, was oh, there wasn't even that. We threw right into the fire. Thank you for it's it's very nice to finally have a full. Okay. Um, can I ask about we're, we're voting on November seventh on, on a special permit. What's that piece of the for the for the marijuana? We are voting. Oh. Well, the R and D. You continued the hearing. Yeah, we're continuing the hearing. You continued it to November seventh. So so that was supposed to start their entire special permit. Yeah, you're voting on it as is, as if the the state buffer zone is the way it is, and that's the decision. And so, if you vote, but I don't know what the state buffer zone. It is that based upon what we know and the facts that we've been presented, our understanding is that it would be allowed in that location. So you'd be you'd be looking at the proposal as it is, not on whether or not it's allowed in that location. This information, this fulsome discussion. Mm -hmm. What are we going to have? Are we going to have that prior to? Hearing about approval. I'm sorry, what do you mean? In other words, we're talking about the buffers, the buffers on discussion. Oh, well, I mean, if town meeting votes something different, then of course we'll be talking about that on November 7th, I'm sure. There's nothing to talk about. But there isn't anything to talk about. <laughs> because that has to be part of the bylaw. Right. And the bylaw has to be changed in town meeting. So we can have that discussion, but it goes nowhere because there's no town meeting. So okay. if town meeting. What do you talk about on November 7th? We use the current way of doing it, which is there is no buffer zone. I and think there is. No, the yeah, there is no buffer zone, but we're not talking about the buffer zone. We're looking at their proposal in the same way that you just reviewed Kathy Nero's proposal today. You're, you're reviewing an EDR special permit for the criteria that's in here, not the criteria at the location or the buffer zone. Okay, which is what you But our previous, we our have previous an meeting was well. derailed by that whole dis discussion, which is now where we are. I know. So we're returning to that. We're returning to that discussion. Okay, yes. just so I. But I understand yeah, everybody's I mean, you're on board to, with that. You're not returning to the discussion about what is the right buffer zone. Well, we will. We will, unless it, it's well, no, no, we, the, we should the town council. The town council has recommended otherwise. Oh, I see. So you're saying history won't repeat itself. We won't get somebody coming up and saying this is, entire discussion is moot. Well, they might. Yeah, they might. Sure Number one is on the public, public comment has been closed. OK. No, but that's it. Yeah, we did. Yeah. But is it? I thought town council said based on what they submitted and what was at the time the buffer zone it, it complies. That's, that's right. What, that's right. Correct. So we're relying on town council. That's and that right. one thing. Now we have to go through the EDR. Process. Right. But I'm just saying yeah. the buffer zone according to town council is it's 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 moved. Moved. It's moved. for that application on the south if they if they want to present it going forward. Right. Okay. Yeah. So unclear. And so it would be up to the applicant or the town to then challenge DPH and say, which is the right determination? You said one thing one day and one thing the next. Which one is it? Okay. So that may be the outcome of that conversation, depending on how you make a decision based on their EDR, not on the location. Okay. The expectation of which we, OK. Yep. OK. Great. Move to close meeting. Adjourn. Yeah. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you.